108 episodes. Uh, this is number 108 going out today, and we're going to give you a little different look. You see me if you watch on YouTube, if you hear me during the podcast. But what you don't know is my friend Gretchen has done all of the transcripts. So any of you that look at a transcript, and the transcript isn't just for those who may want to check it out here and there, but the transcript is what the search engines use. You know it's podcast and put it to optimize it as a crucial part of the success of the podcast. And I could not have done this without my friend Gretchen. Along the way, she has been encouragement. I don't know that I would have had the courage to start it without. And I've turned to her for advice all along the way. So she has been a big part, not only of the podcast, but of the success of the podcast. And I'm really excited. And I'm going to stop talking here in a second. <laughs> but it's really cool today to welcome Gretchen. And we're going to talk about some of our favorite episodes and different things that came up along the way. So, Gretchen, welcome to the side of Mike. Hello, guys. <laughs> it's strange to be on this side of it. I've listened so many times. So, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You know, I obviously am present during the recording of the podcast, and I don't do a lot of editing. People, uh, if they use a lot of ums or filler words, that's kind of on them. You know, I like the podcast to be just like a conversation. When we sit down and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, we don't speak perfectly. We have some of those filler words, and I just wanted it to feel like you and I were sitting down and having a chit chat. So... You, on the other hand, doing the transcription, you've listened to these episodes more than I have, or <laughs> more than any of the other listeners. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Sometimes I have to listen multiple times because, with different accents or just different ways that people speak in general, I have to listen again and again and again. How did they say that? And what exactly are they meaning? Because I'm cities and states and countries i don't know i don't know their vernacular so i have to listen multiple times to catch on so and if they reference a place that is familiar to them that may not be familiar to us you probably have to do a quick web search to find very much so this place yeah very much <laughs> yep there's a lot of places in canada and england that i've never heard of <laughs> so so I've looked them up and even just different topics that they've spoke about. I have to look it up because I don't know. Right. What came as a surprise when you started doing this? What do you know now that you didn't know then that maybe surprises you a bit? Um, I guess I didn't realize how much you probably, and I don't know exactly how much you do, but a lot of the pre-interview speak that you must have with the um, guests that you have so that you know what exactly you might want to talk about to them. I am a, a person that listens to podcasts all day, every day. <laughs> I'm at work, in the car, doing dishes. So I, I hear so many different conversations and learn so much from podcasts but it never occurred to me really what all might go into it beforehand and now on the back end of it it's not just the conversation that we hear in the 30 to 60 minute conversation for podcasts it there's so much more behind it that i it never even occurred to me it was there you know it's funny you mentioned that because when i meet with people I like to actually keep it brief. I like to find out that we have chemistry, that we can have a conversation and it's not going to feel awkward or 
stiff or anything. So that's the main thing. And honestly, I don't want to know a lot of their story before we record because I want to experience it fresh, just like the listener is experiencing it fresh. Mm -hmm. I want to be um, already process the emotions, you know, as we're hearing them. And oh my goodness, that's a whole other. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, actually, I don't spend much time at all beforehand. It's just let's sit down, let's talk as people speak then we just let the conversation guide us okay there is more after that that a a lot more that gets done that i didn't expect and i started simple just the podcast episode only and then i had this brilliant idea since i had all the video footage why not put it on youtube yeah then i realized holy crap I'm experiencing these emotions just like everybody else is. And I've got mascara running down my face and a bunch of masks. Brilliant idea to put this on. <laughs> That's good, though. It makes it authentic. It is. It is. There's nothing put on. And I'm an emotional gal. So it was all, it was all genuine. And then after that workflow got comfortable, I added the blog. And that was at first just the transcript and then the website I used allowed other, it has other tools on it that allowed for an expanded version of the blog. And as I got comfortable with tools, I added things and it was still a manageable workflow when we were in COVID and coming out of COVID. But then later it's like, holy moly, I've got a whole lot of stuff for each episode here. But it just, with anything, you can do it, keep it simple and have a quality product or you can add things. And there were a lot of things I would have loved to have done, but uh, at some point you just kind of say, no, this is good. This is what it's going to be. So, well, I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the opportunity. I've, I mean, I feel like I get to know these people right along with you and all the other listeners. And I feel like I've learned a lot from all of them. Oh, me too. Me too. What are some of your favorite guests? Well, I was looking back at some of them just to try and um, get an idea of ones that I might like. And um, one that has uh, a couple of them that I have actually looked onto Instagram to try and follow just so that I can keep up with what they've been doing. One of them was Jan Stewart. She was in season six, episode six. She has... Uh, she came from a the corporate world and um, her and her husband had two children that have um, multiple mental disorders and um, she has been struggling, um, no doubt, um, but she has found that it was really hard for um, parents to get information on how they should deal with being a support for their kids. So she is a new author and she helps her kids to be um, good contributing people in society. Excuse me. I believe both of them have jobs. And um, even though they have things like Tourette's and um, I can't believe I can't remember what else they had, but so many different challenges. And she was she and her husband both have been on boards and um been great spokespersons for the um different disorders so that parents don't feel lost when they get those diagnoses for their children and i think that one was one that stood out really well to me do you remember her oh my goodness do i she <laughs> i don't know how how she does it her kids had uh, they have ADHD, they have bipolar, um, one has Tourette's, I don't know if both do, but multiple mental illnesses and and other things. And just raising a kid that would have one of those would be mm-hmm. a challenge bigger than a lot of folks, but to have all of that. And then Gretchen, she had breast cancer too. Oh, Yeah. 
cancer and she has some neuropathy and things and but she shared once the process she goes through every morning just to wake up and to go to bed and then to do what she does and she does it so seamlessly mm -hmm. I, she's she's so amazing to me yeah absolutely to me as well yeah yeah what about you what's one that you uh keep thinking back on oh man um one that really got me and this was early on it was johnny mccoy his and this was divided up into two episodes his abuse was so extensive and so profound i was a wreck in doing the interview and in fact afterwards i had to reach out to a friend for support emotionally um his story was just so so much and i worry about him i tried to reach out to him recently and couldn't get a hold of him and that could be for a lot of reasons but i'm yeah. really worried about him in the back of my mind if he's still around if he succumbs to that yeah that one really got me um and perry power his story of sexual abuse and the courage he has to write a book about it, to pursue uh, getting that, to normalize people telling their stories because so many people keep those stories hidden and covered up and the work he does encouraging people to share those stories and to write mm -hmm. about them. He's at such a young age, such an amazing young man. Yeah, he definitely stood out to me too. Uh, and then Gosh, all of them. They all touched me in some way or another. Judy Foreman, the most recent podcast, she was cool. I felt a little fangirl. I didn't know her before <laughs> I met her, but just her credentials, her journalistic career, and of course I read her books, her fiction books and her nonfiction books, and they're amazing. I mean, she's a professional writer for Pete's sake, so she does. Yeah. She was cool. So many. I remember Jetta also. She um was she spoke about gut health and just how she had been adopted and moved to the United States and um basically she just wouldn't give up and taking whatever diagnosis that others would give her. She may she has become a very good advocate for herself and gut health in general. I follow her also um on instagram <laughs> but it seems like we've we've had a lot of authors and a lot of um people that were addicts or um uh had life-threatening illnesses and they've all done been able to pursue the uncomfortable and um make quite a life for themselves it's really neat the 100th episode was justin bryan and his story just really got me in my heart he overcame addiction and all of his troubles and he was so vulnerable in his sharing it was a powerful episode that one is another one of my top ones um uh, the guy edward who went on a search for his biological mother that was a fun oh, little mystery yeah that was fun I am so thankful for the people that reached out to to be on the podcast and the courage to share their stories. I was really inspired, and whenever I have something difficult that comes up, I, it the experience of meeting these folks on this podcast really has inspired me to to just grab a grab the bull by the horns, as they say, lean into it and do the hard things. And I go back and listen to some of these stories and say, all right, this, this is nothing. I can do this. I'll get For sure. Just, I mean, think back to when we had babies and we were trying to potty train, you know, oh, this, they're never going to get it. They're never going to get it. Well, eventually they do because most people have. So, I mean... If we just think of how we hear of other people overcoming so many challenges, we just have to remember that and keep trying and keep pushing ourselves to do the best until we get the result that we're wanting. 
And it's funny you mentioned potty training. My mom gave me some amazing advice there. Uh, I've started paying for diapers and I wanted to potty train my kids. <laughs> and I asked my mom, I said, what's a good age? Potty train him. Can I do it now? He turned, his birthday is in January. So he turned two in January and I didn't want to do it then because I wanted to use our report. Oh. Living in central Illinois may seem to like a much better option. And I'll never forget what she said. She said, listen, he's ready any times. Like the person that has to be ready is you. When you decide you're ready, he'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she nailed that one for sure. Yeah, that's good. Gretchen, what is a time in your life when you had to overcome something that you weren't sure was going to happen? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um I I would I guess one thing I I don't even know which one <laughs> so many they're flooding my mind. Um one is having my first child. Um I all I ever wanted to be when I was growing up was a mom and um got married and tried to in 2005 and about 2006 I thought well I want to have a baby you know and that's what I wanted to be so thought well this would be when it happens you know 2006 we'll be mom and a dad and 2007 came 2008 came and still nothing and I just had to learn that I needed to be happy for others as that came in their life and happy with my husband and our life regardless and just be trusting that God had the time that it was going to be right for us and just living our lives and doing the best that we could until then. And then in 2009, we were blessed with our first <laughs> and that has been wonderful. And of course, then you want another one and you have to remember after a year of trying that it's not as easy. And um, so... 2014, we finally had our second one uh, with many years of prayers and many years of trying and hoping. And so and just just live your days with the hope that it will come and and know that it doesn't it's not our um, timing. And I wouldn't trade it for anything now. The opportunity to spend four years with just my husband. The opportunity for five years with just one child, it's been wonderful. So it's hard when it's not what you wanted or what you thought you wanted, but. It is. And I'm glad for the delay because that meant we got to have our kids. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It took us a while too. And that is such a hard time. I think for women, you know, we, we need to be a part of that club if we want to, not all women want to. But for those of us who want to be in the mom club, and that doesn't come right away, it's hard. And having to wait, you, gosh, you reevaluate everything. Oh, yeah. It's hard to celebrate for your friends, even though you want to. And it's in you. You're so thrilled for them. But then that ache in your own heart is, is hard. For sure. Yeah. But your boys are perfect. I'm glad you have the boys. You have. <laughs> Me too. So what would you share with other folks that are in that space? And you did a little bit about, you know, there's other timing waiting on God. Um, but if there was a mom that came to you today and say, hey, I heard you on the podcast and I'm in this spot, what would you say to her? Um, I think I would say... There's things in your life that you planned to have, but it may not be what ends up being. And if you only have your heart set on that, then you're wasting the time that you have here to enjoy so many other things that you could do and be a support to others for. And what if you think back on your life, it's easier when you're older to look back and think, 
well, about that time, I'm glad that prayer wasn't answered. And I'm so many glad, so glad many other things came instead of it. But I, I think I would just tell them to count their blessings and you can keep that prayer going, but know that if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world and that there are other blessings that can be in your life. And you can be a blessing to many others in life, even without that. This is why I'm so pleased to have you in my life. <laughs> Wisdom. And be jealous, friends, because she's my friend. <laughs> Your friend too. But yep. it's one of the best. And honestly, I, I wouldn't have started this journey without you. I needed that uh, confidence of somebody else that I could see right in front of me and encouraging and uh, your advice has been spot on the whole time. I'm glad I listened. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> like I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, <laughs> did you ever imagine we'd have over a hundred of these? No, can't wait for the next hundred, though. I uh, I think after releasing one every single week since December of 2021, we're gonna take a break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds. And everyone has an opportunity to stay in the loop. In the show notes, there's a link that you can click on and you'll be on a waiting list. You'll get all the news for the podcast. So as soon as we know when the next season is starting and who the guests are, you're going to know too. So make sure you click that link and it's just your name and email. You'll. I'm not going to email you all the time. Gretchen's not going to email you all the time, but we want to know no, you're not going to be forgotten either. We'll send out something at least once a month to say, hey, here's what we're thinking or here's what you can expect just so you know when we'll be back and look forward to what we've got in store. So make sure you that link. Gretchen, what would you like to see happen with the podcast? Well, I'm I'm really into agriculture, so I think I would like to hear more from farmers. I think we know a couple, but not including myself. <laughs> I don't think I need to be on here as a farmer, but um, I know that there have got to be some in our, even, I mean, we're in farming communities that we should be able to hear some from that for sure. Maybe ones that have made it from 88 on, you know, back when. 80, in 88 when there was drought and it was a big struggle and through the different times and changes that have gone on. Um, I think maybe more that have, like I, like I did, um, struggled with um, fertility and um, maybe some that have struggled with uh, marriages that have the success stories that can be a good um, example to others who may be struggling in different parts of their life yeah you know i also had a miscarriage in that journey and that was that was hard but one of the more profound things that helped me get through it was people in my church they all came and i mean the church was packed mm -hmm. that happened. and so many women stood there and shared with me their stories of miscarriage while their kids are running around the church. Yeah. That was powerful. It's those stories that really bolster us and help yeah. us through this. That's why that was really what I was hoping would be at the at the core of this podcast is that someone would find themselves in these stories and get a little hope, a little uh, a little uh consolation that they're not in it alone, that others have done this and be inspired that they can. Yeah. But now farmers, I got through 88. You know where I was in 1988. <clears throat> basic training the summer of 88. So yes, I do know about the heat and the drought of 88. And yeah. Uh, left, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it could be people as they take over the family farm or, you know, just different or starting from scratch because I didn't grow up on a farm, but my and neither did my husband, but we have our own farm now and just seeing how people can get into an industry that is either something that people generally inherit 
or go severely into debt for, it's really inspiring to hear how you can make your own way just by trying hard and um, starting small and working is <laughs> insanely hard. <laughs> And I know a lot of those folks, and they've shared their stories with me of uh, taking over the family farm from their parents, and then the uh, the difficulty of letting go to let their son or their child take over from them. So that would be a fantastic episode, or maybe episodes. It would be fun to get a group of those together and have them together on the podcast. Yeah, for sure. Even just a ten minute clip of one, or for each farmer during a 10 minute segment kind of thing yeah i'd like to do a podcast with some folks that have been caregivers for aging parents that have dementia alzheimer's that oh yeah have to be parents to their parents yeah that would be good too yeah i think uh, more and more that's becoming a uh, commonplace as just another stage of life having to care for your parents so those yeah inspiring yeah and, you know, I'd love to hear what our listeners like, too. So, uh, yeah, email us. Let us know what your interests are, what kind of stories you would like to hear. Because that's really what we want to do, right? For sure. Great. Well, Gretchen, do you have any last words before we end today? Thank you, everybody, for listening. It's been really fun. And I hope you've learned a lot. And um, please do give us some suggestions on what you would like to hear so that we can keep this going keep melissa busy <laughs> and me busy <laughs> yeah, and my friend gretchen needs some transcription time awesome and you know to to the person listening thank you thank you for being on this journey with us some of you have reached out and those are golden i love hearing from you i love to hear what you like, what you don't like, what you want more of. Uh, this is an endeavor that exists for you. So please let us know what you what you want more of. And and if you want to encourage us, we're open for that too. <laughs> Encouragement. So but make sure you click that link in the show notes so you stay in the loop and we will have more for you in this coming year and we'll let you know when that is. All right, Gretchen. See you soon, friend. All righty. Take care.